Welcome to Advocation X, episode number 260. Hello to all my beautiful thinking people out there. It's time for a newsworthy investment broadcast. Please hit the like button and subscribe before we dive into the depths of our topics. The topics that we're going to tackle here and now are errors and omissions, cost averaging, missing the optimum, holding losers, mistimed, my positions explained. Once again, folks, I must say, we never give up and we never give in because knowledge is our power. And this is why we must always keep an open mind because that's where we regain our power. So let's never, ever lose track. Do your research. Make informed decisions based on the knowledge that you gather from as many places as you can find it. Let's dive into the deep end right now. Errors and omissions are made by many, many people one or the other or both. To err is human, so don't sweat it. There are way too many factors involved in investing to think that you're never going to make an error. And you can read every book in the world you want, you're going to screw it up. Now, the big thing is the omissions. Don't fool yourself. Don't try to fool others by saying that you're a perfect investor. Admit to your mistakes. Admit to the errors so you don't repeat them. Help other people to keep you accountable or to remind you not to do it again. Don't hide it. You're doomed to repeat. We've talked about in the past some of the errors that uh, I've committed. And I'm sure many other people have committed them before me. But here's the big thing. When I buy a stock and it just starts to tank and you just want to heave up your supper because you were under the impression that this thing was going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. Well, some of them are, some of them aren't. So what we sometimes have to do is what we call dollar cost averaging, either up or down. So let's just say I buy a hundred shares of stock X. And again, this is a fictitious situation and never, ever take my videos for being actual financial advice. They're meant for sharing of opinion and information flow so that we can all gather as much information as we can and make our own decisions based on our own research, which helps coming from a forum or videos like these. So dollar cost averaging. I buy a hundred shares of this fictitious stock and it immediately after I buy it instead of it being a hundred dollars a share they're now only worth fifty dollars a share I've lost fifty percent of my money because I went to supper because maybe if I was sitting there watching it I may have sold when it got down to like ninety dollars but alas now I'm faced with this fifty dollar stock that I bought for a hundred dollars what do I do sell take 50% loss? Well, if I'm running a business of that, then maybe I can use that as a tax deduction at the end of the year. But why would I suffer that now when I could use that money to do other things? So here's what we do. You always have a good amount of reserved cash. Reserved cash. That's reserved for specific circumstances like a really great buy that pops up or dollar cost averaging down. So I paid $100 for the stock, I got 100 shares, and now it's worth 50. So what would happen if I bought 200 shares at 50? Well, if I bought 100 shares at 50, it would come down to about $75 a share. So just imagine, I buy 200 shares, 300 shares, 400 shares. Now my price is so close to the $50 it's at right now, that all it has to do is climb a little bit, and I've made good money. And what happens if it starts to fly up again? 
And I have those hundreds and hundreds of shares that now I can sell at all different levels going up and then end up with my original 100 shares that maybe only cost me $56 a share and they're now worth 150 That's what dollar cost averaging can do for you. But don't be fooled. Some stocks don't come back. And then you'd be chasing bad money with good money. That doesn't work. If it just keeps going down, you just keep feeding the beast. So first you have to have done your research and you have to trust that that stock is actually going to be a winner. That's my point. When you're holding a loser stock, if you hold a loser stock, you are definitely in the dirt. Don't chase it. If you're already down a ton, you didn't invest anyway anything that you weren't willing to lose, let it run. If it comes back, then great, you get your money back. And if it doesn't, you took a chance. Okay? I mean, if it's a large sum of money, like I said, if it goes down a certain percentage, make your own point where you don't want to suffer any more of that loss and get out. But that means you got to watch it. You have to come back and check on it regularly. Okay? Or you put your money into a super secure stock and just let it sit there. But they go down too. And I'll tell you, there are times in the past when I've looked at my RSPs held by another investment company and went, ouch, I lost a lot of money this year. Like I worked all year and contributed to that RSP and I actually went negative. Wow, that's really not cool. If you have $300,000 in your RSP and you work the whole year and continue contributing, contributing another $20,000 to that RSP. And then when you get your statement at the end of the, or the beginning of the next year, it tells you that you only have 90,000 left. That's not fun. So, if you had been watching carefully, you may have jumped out of all those investments while you were up and sat on them and waited for the markets to shift. And therefore, you wouldn't have suffered all those losses. When we miss the ultimate sell point, what happens? Stock is going up, it's 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 going up. And then we go, wait, I think it's going to go up way higher. And you just sit back and you go about your business. You go, ah, you know what? I'm going to let it ride. And you come back and it's crashed. We call that greed or mistimed sale. And sometimes it's a mistimed, mistimed buy. So again, that goes back to your dollar cost averaging. Okay. So you could end up buying a stock that's at its peak and it's got no place to go but down. Or you could be riding a stock up and miss that peak and watch it fly down the other side. Either way, you can use the dollar cost averaging. How about this? You bought 100 shares at $100 a share, and it's going up. And it's going up. And you're happy with yourself. You made a great decision. And it's going up. And it's going up. Wait a second. Aren't these things supposed to have peaks and valleys? This one's still going up. So what do you do? Well, do some more research. Find out, why is it going up? Why is it not stopping? Maybe there's some really great decisions and great discoveries that have come out that show that it's going to be worth 10 times what it was. And it's not going to stop. Well, you can't wait for a dip. Buy it. Buy it now. Don't buy it all. Buy a big tranche. And if you see it take another dip, buy another tranche. And as it's going up, and it keeps going up again, buy another tranche. So your dollar cost averaging, it started out at $100 a share. Maybe now you're buying it for $900, $1,000 a share. And other people are looking at you going, are you crazy? It's going to crash, you know. It has to go back down. It can't just keep going up. And yeah, well, maybe it can. So, in my opinion, my opinion, remember, it's an opinion, it's mine, it's not actual financial advice. This is just sharing with you what I've already gone through. Buy it on the way up. 
because I was one of those who was caught in this stupid trap where I listened to people who were supposed to be more knowledgeable than me, and I waited for a stock to come back down to buy it. That's dumb. If you can, if you've hit a gold mine, do you stop digging after you get that first nugget? Oh, hell no. You just keep on going at her until all of a sudden it starts to thin out. Then you go, okay, I got to pull back now. I can't be putting all this money in here. Maybe I'll leave it for somebody else who can develop the rest of it, but it's just not worth my while to keep digging at this little thing. And it may go up a little higher than you expected, but that's okay. You made a decision as to when you were going to take your profits, take them and run. Lessons I've been learning personally. I'm only sharing them with you because I learned them personally or through other investment partners. Okay. So my positions, I'm going to tell you my positions particularly each position, because I'm right now holding about 52 positions. Maybe, maybe a little higher. Uh, but I can tell you, one set of positions is in a penny stock holding, which is a cash account. And that's all I really use it for, is penny stocks, because I'm willing to lose that money, so I'm going to buy them and just let them run. I'm not going to be sucking money out of it regularly and paying capital gains taxes and all this other stuff. No, I'm just going to let them run. Then I have my RSP account. And I'll tell you, if you're going to use your RSPs or your 401ks or whatever it is you want to call them, do your research, do your full due diligence and pick stocks that you're not going to lose your nest egg on. Okay, that's what I did in my RSP account. So there aren't a whole lot of share, uh, stocks in there or ETFs, but there are some very select good investments in there. Then, of course, I, I have Canadian and American currency. I'll invest in Canadian stocks or ETFs as long as I'm using that Canadian account and you can transfer money back and forth, uh, but you're paying exchange and fees all the way through, right? So just realize that you can't just transfer money back and forth from US to Canadian and expect that it's all going to be just sweet and easy. No, there, there's exchange rates and all kinds of good stuff that you're going to be suffering. Better you learn it now than learn it by trial and error. Let me go to my main account. My main account is a US account. And that one contains many, many different stocks picks. My number one position is and will always be Tesla. And with that Tesla position, I'm holding. I'm holding and I'm holding and I'm holding and I'm holding. There are certain ways that I do things that may or may not work for you or somebody else. I'm not a bona fide qualified day trader and I'm not an investment guru who can pick stocks just out of the blue and they all work. So what I do, example-wise, okay? I buy 100 shares at $100 a piece of fictitious stock Z. And all of a sudden, it starts to go down. And then it flatlines. And then it starts to go down. Flatlines just means it doesn't move much up or down. Sometimes a little ticks up and down, up and down. And it stays pretty level. So it's not much happening. Do some research. Why is it not happening? What's going on with this company? Well, they've been pushing certain things for so many years. And they've tried this way, tried that way. They go here, they go there. Oh, okay. So that's understandable. They're obviously not going to do amazingly right now. But one of these times, they may hit. They may hit the jackpot. All their efforts may actually become fruitful. But I'm not going to wait for it. So what do I do? Dollar cost average. It's not going down, but it's doing all these blips up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So you try to time it, get it as low as you can, buy a whole whack of them, bring the price down to the point where 
a little uptick, you lose no money. Sell them all. Now, I don't sell them all, all, okay? So what I would do is I would sell all but five shares. It doesn't cost me anything to hold those five shares. And if the company starts to move, I'll see that in my portfolio down the way. So the reason why I have so many shares now is not because I've got 100 shares of each or 1,000 shares of each. It's because some of them are failed stocks. But they're positive now. But they've taken a long time to get to that positive mark. But that's okay, because I'm just waiting to see if they start to skyrocket. What am I going to do? Wait for it to dip? No. I'm going to buy in on the way up. And I'm going to ride that wave like like a surfer king. Okay? So, my positions in my main portfolio primarily consist of Tesla. When I'm done, it will consist of 85% Tesla. 5% I'm going to dedicate it to my number two stock. Quite possibly, it'll probably be CRISPR. Okay? Um, and if you look into CRISPR therapeutics, it looks like a pretty good bet. So that would be my secondary stock. The other 10% I'm going to use for all kinds of risky bets. Because why? Because if I can jump on a couple of really good risky bets that go up crazy for a week... I can sell them and buy more Tesla, and I would. Or possibly CRISPR if it starts to take off. Down the road from there, I'd have to watch both CRISPR and Tesla and see which one is actually doing the faster and stronger moves and start to balance out my portfolio that way. Okay, And of course, don't get me wrong, I'm not a total fool. If everything went south, I would have to get out of those two positions as well and look for the next good one. But I can pretty well surmise what's going to happen with Tesla. To the stars. Oh, not back. Because it ain't coming back. It's just going to keep traveling the stars. Just like Elon's Roadster. <laughs> One of the original roadsters. Okay, so, as we know, this is how I plan my positions. And the reason I do that is a second fold. The second part is this. If I buy 100 shares at $100 a share, and I double my money, I will take my 100 shares and sell them, so that money goes back into my account. Okay, that's my reserve cash now. The other hundred shares, I will let those babies ride and watch them until they get to their last peak. But here's what I'll do with that other money that's in reserve. It's not just held for great deals or whatever. As soon as that stock takes any bit of a dip below where I sold it, enough to justify me buying back in, I'll buy back in with that 100 shares. The other 100 is not going to get touched. And then as it goes up again, I'll sell it again. Not a dedicated day trader. I'm a petty day trader. I just opportunistic day trading. On the stocks that are doing well, that are volatile. As long as they're volatile, that's the ones I want to play with. Because they will go up and down sometimes 2, 3, 4, 5, 6% a day. In leaps and bounds, up and down, up and down, peaks and valleys. Those are the ones that I absolutely love. So, let me just close by saying, there's much more to come in this space. Give me your comments, your suggestions, what questions you have. I'll do my best to answer all of them. And again, it's opinion based on fact based on my own thought process, based on intuition. And remember, guys, when you're into investing, you're always gambling. There are super risky bets. There are fairly safe bets. There are no guaranteed bets. None. Zero. There is not one that's a guaranteed bet because you just cannot predict the future and what's going to happen 
that's going to derail that one that you thought was the super stock. So, I hope you enjoyed this content. Check out any other of our videos in this stream or check out the other playlists that you'll find under Advocation X. And don't forget, smash that bell, subscribe, become a member, hit that like button. The more likes we get, the quicker we're going to beat that algorithm from YouTube and we're going to get to where we need to go. Remember folks, this is your content. I cover most of your suggestions and requests as often as I can. So keep them coming. We rely on you for all of our future successes and without you, our channel would not exist. I hope you're enjoying the content and will continue to run with us into the future. So don't forget, hit that like button and hit it early in the video. That really tells YouTube that you're enjoying our content and allows more people to get exposed to what we have to offer. Leave your ideas for future topics you'd like covered in the comments section. And I send a special thanks out to all you beautiful thinking people out there. And I give a shout out to all of our sponsors, present, future, past. And until next time, thank you for spending time with us here on this channel. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and above all, do your best to stay as happy as humanly possible.